G'day there guys, would be the first to die to anything but zombies in the middle of a zombie apocalypse here. It's your Aussie hubby Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love today's episode, don't forget to sit back, relax, chug a prawn on the barbie, and enjoy today's bloody good content. Posted by user Mike Audrey Myers, titled, Am I the a-hole for traumatizing my roommate's girlfriend? I, 24 male, live in a flat with my two friends, James and Emma. Since the pandemic started, James's girlfriend Sarah had moved in with us. She'd lost her job because of the pandemic, which had eventually led to her losing her flat. We had no issue with her moving in with us. She needed a place to stay. She was really chill for the first week or two, but she gradually started trying to dictate everything in the house. It started off with really trivial things like what movies we watched, we're big horror fans, Sarah isn't, what we could eat, having to go without hot water so she could take long baths every night, etc. We all let this slide at first as she'd been through a lot and we didn't want her to feel unwelcome. It started to escalate to her dictating what we were allowed to eat, moving things around in our rooms taking Emma's things without permission, and even throwing our things away. She threw away my signed reanimator poster that my dad got me because she was grossed out by it. She'd complain all the time about the horror-related items in mine and Emma's bedroom. Emma and I completely understood that not everyone likes horror, but she was, quite frankly, being a pain in the ass. So we refused to stop wearing our horror t-shirts as we wore them all the time, way before Sarah moved in with us. They're not graphic in the slightest. Where I might be a massive a-hole. It happened last week and I'm still getting a lot of crap for it. It wasn't too long after she threw away the reanimator poster I mentioned. I was still pretty ticked off as it was a present from my dad. We don't speak anymore due to family troubles. I had taken a nap, as my sleep schedule isn't great, and when I woke up and left my bedroom, I saw Emma James and Sarah sitting on the sofa watching Hereditary. I was surprised to say the least, but found out later that Sarah and James had thought that if they stayed there long enough, Emma would leave. She was watching the movie before they came back, and they could make out or whatever on the sofa. No idea why they didn't just go to James's room, but, you know... I decided to be petty, snuck over to the sofa, and waited. For those who don't know, one of the main characters in the movie does a tongue click sort of thing quite a lot. I waited for a quiet moment and did the tongue click. Sarah freaked out. I got an earful from both of them about how I was an a-hole for scaring Sarah when I know how much she hates horror movies and how I'm childish. I accept that it was pretty childish, but... I was stressed and petty, but she's been telling people about how I traumatized her and how she couldn't sleep all night. She was right about that, but from the noises coming from their bedroom, I don't think it's because she was scared. She even told people that I gave her a panic attack, which I didn't. Am I the a-hole? I don't think so. You made a joke during a horror movie and she got freaked out. You're not an a-hole for doing that, there's nothing inherently bad about that. She's just being a drama queen, she obviously had fun that night, um, didn't have a panic attack by the looks of it, and it doesn't seem like she cares all that much, she just wants to complain. Gonna go with, uh, not the a-hole for this one. Edit. I figured I should clarify a few things, as I've seen a few people in the comments suggesting or asking similar things. No, Sarah does not pay for anything. She paid about half of what the rest of us pay for a couple months, then stopped due to money problems. We have tried talking to her and James about her attitude, and trying to dictate everything we do in our own home. James stopped talking to us for a couple days, and it was really awkward and tense in the flat for a while. We've spoken to Sarah about her behaviour multiple times, but she just accuses us of overreacting. The only time I've actually yelled at her was when she threw away some of my things. Emma and I have contacted the landlord to see if there's any chance we can install a lock on our bedroom door. I know scaring her was childish, but I just sort of snapped. Not an excuse, but a part of me doesn't fully regret it. 
She made our life hell, and it gives me a tiny sense of satisfaction knowing that got her back in a small way. Emma and I can't move out due to financial troubles, or we would have. We have, however, been keeping an eye out for affordable places to stay. We're going to have a talk with James when he gets back, and discuss Sarah getting her own place, so hopefully we won't have to move out of our own home. Thank you for the support, everyone. Oh, and yeah, the poster was signed by Jeffrey Combs. Not the a-hole. If she's that freaked out, she should not be sitting there watching the movie. Thanks. Yeah, I thought it was weird because she complained when we watched Goosebumps, but she'll quite happily sit there when an adult horror is on. I don't understand her. Nah, she just wants to control what you guys do. Also, you should have kicked her out the moment she started going into your rooms and taking your things. This is a thief, plain and simple, F that. Right? And is she paying the water and electric slash gas bill? No? Then screw her baths. Not the a-hole. But what did you do when she threw away your poster? I would have gone mental. I did kind of yell at her for a bit, but I was too upset to actually do much. I cried that night. I know it sounds childish, but it was something my dad got for me. It had some nice memories attached to it. Not childish at all, and she should pay to get you a new poster or whatever else she's thrown away. Thanks. I don't think it can really be replaced, though. Dad and I went to a convention and got Jeffrey Combs to sign it. I'll bring up some of the other stuff she threw out, though. Emma should as well. Update. Hi, everyone. So it's been a little while since my last post here. A lot of stuff has been going on. To start, I want to start with thanking the people who commented and offered advice on my last post. It was really appreciated and really helped. I've also accepted that I'm a bit of an a-hole for being so petty, but a part of me doesn't really regret scaring Sarah. Myself and Emma spoke with James about Sarah's behaviour, dictating what we can and can't do in our flat, throwing away our belongings, etc. Needless to say, this did not go to plan, and it ended in a huge argument, and what I believe to be the end of our friendship. There was a lot of yelling, and nothing got resolved. He told Sarah about our talk, and she went out of her way to make nasty comments about us and call us pathetic. My anxiety was through the roof in the days after our row, as I didn't want to lose my friend, and felt that I had ruined everything. Maybe I was just being pathetic. Honestly, Emma was my rock through all this hassle, and managed to convince me that it wasn't my fault. She's an angel. Anyways, skip to last week. We get a call from one of our friends, Sam. He had just recently moved out of his parents' house into a nice two-bedroom apartment. He's been struggling a bit with bills, and due to a bad family situation, he can't move back home. He asked us if we'd be open to moving in with him. He knew about our current situation and wanted to help us out, plus it helps him financially. Emma and I already share a room as well, so there was no issue with the bedrooms. Plus, Sam is a huge horror nerd like us, so it works out for the best. We've already given James and our landlord fair warning. He was a godsend. Emma and I are moving out in a few weeks. We have some things to get sorted, personal and financial, and then we'll be out of here. Our friend's apartment is a little further away from our work slash college than we'd like, but we can work something out. It's worth getting up half an hour earlier to go to work rather than having to deal with Sarah. We didn't want to leave our home because of her, but Emma already has enough on her plate between work and her personal life that she doesn't care too much, and I'm too emotionally drained to really care about the old place. I just want to move out of that stressful environment. Not the ending I hoped for, but things are looking up for Emma and I. Oh, plus, we're going to start saving to go to a convention together to get another poster signed, once this pandemic stuff is over. It won't bring back the poster that my dad got signed, but we can make new memories which would be better than just going out and buying a signed reanimator poster, if that makes any sense. Thank you for the help Reddit. 
I've seen a lot of people suggesting that Emma and I start moving our stuff into Sam's flat ASAP and to keep an eye out for belongings in case Sarah tries anything. Thank you to everyone that suggested it. Emma and I have taken your advice and we're going to speak to Sam about moving some of our belongings into his flat in the next couple of weeks. I also saw a lot of people asking how Sarah and James reacted when we told them that we were moving out. Needless to say, James was not happy to hear that he'd have to find new roommates or pay for everything himself. Sarah was also not too pleased that her verbal punching bags would be leaving, and that she might have to get a job to help pay rent. I hope this cleared some things up for you guys. Again, thanks for all the kind comments and awards. You folks really are amazing. It's fascinating that someone is so lost in a relationship that they can't even acknowledge going into someone else's room and throwing out their belongings is wrong. I don't know if the friendship is really worth ever salvaging, but if it's important to you, I would just leave and not burn the bridge any further. The way these youthful romances tend to go, they'll break up eventually and he'll suddenly realise how he lost friends over this girl. Some people do learn from it. Or... You'll realise he was always kind of a douche who thought of you as lesser. I really feel for you, but just know that he is going to regret it when he realises that his girlfriend has alienated everyone who likes him. He will eat those words when he realises how isolated he is becoming. Good luck with the move. Get your valuables secure before you tell them, and photograph everything before you leave. Posted by user throwaway789072, titled, Am I the a-hole for prohibiting my mother from seeing my child because she's tricked him into thinking she's his mum? Throw away to avoid anyone recognising me. I have a now three-year-old son who was living with my mum, his grandma, for a year while I was away getting myself together. For personal reasons, I will not explain why I was far away for so long, but I felt I needed to better myself for my son. My mother agreed to take care of him while I was away. I FaceTimed with him whenever I could. Fast forward to last month, I come to my mother's house to pick up my son. He's happy to see me, and me and my mother are talking while he's playing with his dinosaurs. He suddenly looks up at my mother and says, Mommy, I'm thirsty. I was obviously confused, and asked my mother if she heard him call her mum. She laughed nervously, and said that he had been calling her that for a while. She basically explained that while I was away, she told him that she was his mum, and to call her that. I laughed and told her that I wasn't comfortable with that, since she wasn't the one who birthed him. I told her he should know that she's his grandmother, not his mum. She got upset and told me that he needed a mother figure while I was gone, and she was just trying to fill that role for him. She said something along the lines of, I've been his mother for a year now, and you can't change it. We went back and forth until I got to the point where we started raising our voices. She spat out some insults about me being a bad mum for being away for so long, and how she should be his mum because he doesn't need a mum like me. I simply told her that she isn't going to be seeing him anymore because I'm not comfortable with him calling her mum. We gathered his stuff and left after that. She blew up my phone for days, talked some mess to family members, anything she could to make me look and feel bad. But I refused to forgive her, especially after all that stuff she said. Am I the a-hole? For those of you saying I abandoned him, I didn't. I was too sick to take care of him. That's all I'm going to say about that. I couldn't be the best mother to him because of my medical issues. I wanted to be there for him. I didn't just dump him on my mother. I feel the need to explain that because people are getting the wrong idea. It was possible for him to visit, but my mum said that it would be best if he didn't see me like that because he'd be too young to understand. And I trusted her, so I didn't allow him to visit. No, I wasn't in a mental hospital or rehab. It was physical health reasons. A lot of you are saying that you think I was in rehab because of the way I've worded things in my post. Rather than edit out the original, I'd just like to explain that it's probably not the best wording to use for this situation, and I understand that now. What I meant to say was that I felt I needed to be in better health for my son. 
Getting myself together, quote unquote, in my head, pretty much means getting better and healthier. I apologize for that. This will probably be my last edit. My son is getting a therapist, like a lot of you have recommended. I'm considering working things out with my mother, only because I don't want to be fighting her for custody. Still unsure, though. I think you've given valid reasons for you being away, and I think she had more than enough capacity to be grandmother, that is still a motherly figure, but it is not the sole mother role in this child's life. I think she was overstepping a boundary there by making herself the mother when she's quite clearly not, and she understands your reasons for being away. Yes, he needs a motherly role in his life, but she is not the mother, she is the grandmother. I'm pretty sure kids can understand that. But I also get it's a rock and a hard place situation because then he'd be asking, where's my mum? Why isn't she here? Why has she abandoned me? And for that, I don't have an answer for what I would do in that situation because, hey, that's hard. You can't particularly explain it to the kid. She can't even explain it to us. That's a really hard situation to answer. I can understand people giving this an everyone sucks here evaluation, though I'm more on the side of OP for this one because I feel like they did need that time out to be better for themselves, and I believe them for that, and I can see why they would be upset. But me personally, I would talk with the mother and I would work things out with them, because she took on your son and she cared for him while you couldn't. That's very hard for a lot of people to do. Not the a-hole. I have to wonder what people's responses would be if, say, you were away for a year serving your country, or working long periods travelling to support your son, and your mum pulled this move. People don't think mental illness is a real thing until it's theirs. This. It's appalling the number of people who jump to, you're a drug addict, then proceed to invalidate anything else she said. The OP and her son need time and space to recover from her manipulative mother. Even if she was getting over a drug addiction, she took time to better herself so she could be there for her son. I don't understand the amount of people saying everyone sucks here. The secrecy does not imply stigma, it implies secrecy. People are also conveniently skipping the part where the grandmother says, I should be his mum now, and refuse to back down about it. And people are also writing cute anecdotes like, oh, my two-year-old did this too on his own. Like, um, that's really different than him being taught to call her mum. Like, world's different. Either way, this lady is trying to isolate the son from his real mum. You could argue she was trying to kidnap him and make him her child. I don't think that's a safe situation for the son to be in. People are acting like OP is the devil for not letting her son around someone who is trying to take her son from her. Come on, folks. We can do better than this. F sake. Everyone sucks here. Grandma could have easily clarified to your son what her relationship is, and being a mother figure doesn't have to mean that she has to be called mum. However... You clearly are aware that you have some issues you had to work out, and your mum did something big for agreeing to help to raise your kids. You are now cutting him off from an important person in his life for the last year, since the two adults can't work out their issues. Two of you need to talk and figure this out and dig into the larger issues, maybe even with some counselling or outside help. Some kids on their own use that word without being told because they want a mum. Not sure if you have kids, but my stepdaughter calls me mum, even though she has a mother who's absent. I am a mother to her, and she's my daughter. I would never tell her to do something she isn't comfortable with. Update. I just wanted to start out by saying thank you to everyone for the feedback that you gave me and the judgments. Whether they were negative or positive, I took each and every one of them into deep consideration. I accepted the judgement, and indeed realised that I was also being an a-hole. My son has since seen a therapist, like a lot of you suggested he should. He's done pretty well, although the therapist suggested he continue therapy for a little longer, considering he's still confused about the situation. He knows I'm his mother, but essentially thinks he has two mums. I've done my very best to go slow with him and teach him who is his mum and who is his grandmother. 
Regarding his grandmother, I did what a lot of you suggested and let her FaceTime him every day for a couple hours to not upset him. I did this until an incident involving her came up. I'm taking this to court. As much as I hate to further upset my son, I have come to the conclusion that she no longer needs to be in contact with us, at least not for a while. I'm sorry for all of you that this disappoints. I just want to do what's best for my son. As for my health, I am slowly getting better, in case any of you were wondering. I have to visit my doctor several times a month, but that's an improvement, honestly. Thank you all. I wish this situation could have ended differently, but I was able to try to resolve it thanks to all of you. Thanks for the update. Wishing you and your son good luck. What did your mother do to warrant a court case? Sorry. I'm invested since a friend had a similar situation to this. This isn't the first time a grandma has overstepped her boundaries. She tried to take him from me in the middle of the night. Edit. Just heard the reason for the court getting involved. Keep your son as far away from her as possible. This woman has proven herself to be a danger to you and him. I really hope you have her attempted kidnapping documented. Perhaps think about changing the locks, if you can. She's insane, and your son is her do-over. I'm so sorry you're going through this, and I wish you and your son all the best and a healthy, speedy recovery. As someone who was kidnapped by my grandmother, who then adopted me by forging documents to say she was adopting her grandson, I'm a cis female. She dresses me up and convinced me I was male. I'm glad you were taking actions against her. If your mom is anything like my dad's mom, she is convinced she is right and everyone is wrong, and will never ever see what she did as wrong. Till my grandmother's dying breath, she insisted she was right. Never ever let this woman around your son and explain to him why, even when he doesn't believe you. I needed to see court documents to understand the full extent of the effery of what happened. He might be like this too. What happened to him will be traumatic to him when he learns about it when he's older. At times, it will hit him harder than others. Never deny what happened. Never hide what happened, because one of these days, if you hide it, aren't clear about it, then he will start believing that he's going to get confused. Therapy will be good now to help little him to understand at his level what happened, but he will need it when he's older. When my brother and I were kids, my gran took care of us on several occasions for extended periods while my parents were absent, for a variety of reasons. Even when my brother was two, he was not at all confused about the difference between mum and gran, but he had plenty of maternal love and leadership from gran nonetheless. I'm glad you were protecting yourself legally. Alright, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video, guys. I do hope you enjoyed it. As always, I want to do a huge shout out to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. You should be up on the screen now. I love you all, and I think every single one of you are amazing for supporting the channel in the way that you do. Again, thank you so much for supporting me. And again, if you did enjoy today's video, please do tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. All of your hot takes, opinions, whatever you think, really, whatever's going on in your life right now, I'd love to hear down in the comments below. Before I leave, I'd also like to announce that I'm going to start doing meme content again on the second channel. I know it's been a while. So click on the marquee head on the screen without the Australian flag behind him if you want to go see some memes. And as always, guys, have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.